Fig Jam has taken the whiteboarding and collaboration scene by storm. In April 2021, I made a prediction. I predicted that Fig Jam was going to put a lot of focus on building out their repository of pre-main templates to compete with their main competitor, Miro.com. I reckon I would still keep with Miro.com if I need to run an extensive uh, workshop. But when Fig Jam goes beyond beta and they actually have a library of all the templates, I reckon you can keep it all in-house, guys. Yeah! Now, since they've delivered on what I wanted, I've been using Fig Jam for all my user research, collaboration, and workshopping activities. And since it's been such a big part of the entire design process, I'm actually going to be teaching it in an upcoming course as well. So let's jump right in and smash out six smashing Fig Jam hacks. Now, the very first hack that I wanna share with you guys is going from Google Sheets into Fig Jam. So I actually, depending on the project that I'm work on, working on, if I am interviewing a lot of people, I've actually started to use Google Sheets to document all my insights. Why? Because I can actually go ahead and let's say I'm going to highlight these uh, insights from four different candidates on participants. I can go to Fig Jam and hit C Command V and this will automatically post all the insights and details in each cell as a new posted note, as you can see over here. What I would normally do is I would then zoom out and I would highlight for the first participant, I might change the color to a green, and then I might actually change the second participant to a different color, to a pink. And then I would go third participant and I would pretty much just go through and change it up for every single participant. This way, as I start to synthesize the data and try to create classifications of insights, I can actually go ahead and pull out all the insights for a one specific question. So let's say, what gender do you identify yourself as? I can start to go ahead and just create very quick insights like this. And because I have already associated the names for a specific color, I can find out and pull out and form insights really, really quickly. So I love going from Google Sheets into Fig Jam. Now the second hack is to create poster notes from text. So let's say you are doing a lot of documentation or you're taking insights on Notion, right? You might go ahead and copy all these insights, paste it down into Fig Jam, and you can go to your plugins and you can find a plugin called Create Sticky from Text. You can hit run, this will open up a, a window and you can either create stickies from text layers or you can turn every paragraph into a separate sticky. So let's just go create stickies from text layers. As you can see, that will create one big sticky note. You can also start again and turn every paragraph, right? Every paragraph in this selection of content into separate stickies. So as you can see, if I close this now and delete this one, you can see that it's pulled out all the different insights into separate sticky notes. And this is extremely powerful if you are working on a smaller scale user research uh, project and you need quick insights being created from a large chunk of text because you've been documenting all your insights in an app like Notion. Now, the third hack that I personally love is that I don't actually quite like these dots in the background. I find them a little bit messy and sometimes things don't actually align to the uh, posted notes or the things that I paste down in the document. So I actually like to go to view and I like to sh turn off dot grid. And personally, as you start to doing user research, you're synthesizing data or you're doing a workshop and you're collaborating with other people, there's a lot of mess on the whiteboard already. So I don't like having the dots and removing them to me cleans up the entire file. Now, the fourth hack that I personally love is actually utilizing a plugin called Paint. Now, imagine yourself, you've interviewed maybe 10 participants. Sometimes Fig Jam doesn't give you the flexibility to create lots of different colors and lots of different hues and shades for your diagrams or your posted notes. So if you click on any posted note, you can see you've got a, a limited selection of color. So when I've done a lot of user research, I've done a lot of synthesis, I personally have lots of different participants and I want a large range of colors that I can use on my Fig Jam document. So if you go into your plugins and you hit paint and you run this uh, plugin, this will automatically generate you more hues, more shades, more colors as well that you can utilize as you can see 
in your document. So it really just broadens the opportunities of different colors that you can use in your uh, Fig Jam, in your collaboration workshops. Now the fifth hack is something more for organization in your file. So as you can see over in this file, I can't zoom in because this is a real project that I've done a lot of synthesis on and it's going to be documented in one of my upcoming courses. But when you're doing synthesis and user research, it's not meant to be a tidy and neat experience, right? You are synthesizing data, it's going to be messy, you're forming new insights. So things are all over the shop and it's meant to be like that. You're not trying to design this in a beautiful way. But there is an element of trying to keep things more organized. So in Fig Jam, what I like to do is I like to actually go ahead and select the rectangle. I like to drop it down. I like to make it a nice bright color that I can see. And then I might actually go, what, what is this section? So these are actually personas at the top, right? And I might actually drag that all the way out. And I might just create a nice section over here. I can then hit Command D, drop this down and there are two different types of personas uh, over here. So this one might be um, family, uh, couples, sorry, whoops, couples. And I might command D this one, bring this over to the right hand side. And I might actually group this as families, families. And then I might change this to a secondary color. So it doesn't, it's not as prominent as the top one. And this allows you to just create beautiful sort of sections in your Fig Jam without having to bring things over from Figma. Now you can also duplicate this down over here and you can, as you can see, you can create just like nice sections for your document. So it just doesn't get so messy because I personally hate it when my whiteboard gets really messy and it's hard to find specific elements and there's no structure to everything. So obviously I like to use this because you can scale it out. If you use post-it notes, it's not used for sections. As you can see, if I go in and zoom in and I type in a section name, you can't resize this really. It's limited for its purpose. And last but not least, I have mentioned this hack before, but I'll mention it again because it is absolutely a gold mine. If you type in figjam.new, this will automatically create a new document inside FigJam. And if you were wondering, do people even use Figma in the browser? Believe me, there is a lot of people using Figma in the browser. It's very natural for me to open up a new tab and wanna go into Figma to open up our files very, very quickly. So hopefully you enjoyed these six Fig Jam hacks. It's still a new product and it's still gaining more traction, but I genuinely believe that Fig Jam has made a ton of progress and it's becoming my go-to app for user research and collaboration within workshop environments. Let me know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite Fig Jam hacks? And I will see you in another video very soon.